And so the chapter two of my day two experience started in earnest at the Mukuni Art Village. When I visit the African country, I'm fascinated by everything. I was just looking at him feeding the baboon. I was just so happy. I felt like I wanted to feed the baboon myself, but then the thing ran away and I was just like, how are you guys? You know, I hope you're good and that. While I was still asking questions about the artworks and stuff that they have there, one of them looked at me. You are famous. Yes. <laughs> you are famous. <laughs> that's, that's wow. <laughs> yeah. When you go, you come, I have a gift for you. I will give you something. You come. I was like, what? I was so touched when he said that he has a gift for me. This is the entrance to yet another tour. The first leg into this one hour journey happened at the place where he gave us the history of the Zambezi River. That was where he told us that Zambia actually got its name from the Zambezi River. And then he showed us how high the water could come during the rainy season and what happens at that region when the rains are down. Because at the time we were there, it was not rainy season, September of 2022. So no rainy season. It was already dry season. But it was telling us that if the rains were down and it was during the rainy season, that the water could come so high. Then he told us about the Nyami Nyami. The spirit, the goddess that they worship over there, he told us about all kinds of stuff. He was telling us so much. I felt like I was in a classroom. He was educating us, telling us the history, the dynamics and everything, the seasons and all of that. And then there was a turning point in our discussion. So we, we had Susi yeah. and Chuma. Susi those, and Chuma? Those guys were from up in Botswana. Okay. Those were the guys who helped or who brought Livingstone all the way on a dugout canoe. Pardon and they are, they are our locals? They are our locals. And Chuma sounds like an Igbo name, Chuma. Chuma, yeah. We, so we answer Ch Chuma in Igbo land. Yeah, I, I, yeah, sure. You see? They so brought him the all images. The, way up to the Victoria Falls here. They brought him on tourism. Yes. And he came to see and then put his, his face there as in the, he's the one that discovered. So the people who brought him, we don't, we, we're just hearing ones. about them in the background. Right. Yeah. Uh, Hygienos, it's yeah. almost like you brought me here to see Victoria Falls and I am the first person you're bringing here and I come over here I and I say, oh, I just discovered Victoria Falls. Falls. Yeah. And then I put my plaque over there. This, yeah. this is insane and someday somebody has to correct it. They need to find out who the guys that brought him here were and then put their plaques over there. Yeah. Get the village king and put it. We have got our own local yeah. name. We have got our own local name of which we call the Victoria Falls. Mm -hmm. We call it Musi Otunia. Yeah! So Musi Otunia, in our local language, it simply means the smoke that thunders. Even so, Zambezi, call it Zambezi Falls. Yeah, sure. Please! So that's how, that's what we call it, Musi Otunia. Musi Otunia. Yeah, so the smoke they refer to or is the mist, which looks like bushfire smoke at a distance. And the thundering they talk about is the noise you get when the water runs down yeah so we call it musi or junior the oh, smoke africa that thunders. Yeah. god will help us in africa so man if you go to the airport livingston airport we even changed the name of the airport from livingston airport to harry Kumbla international thank airport. thank you so harry Kumbla was one of the freedom fighters yes who came from the southern part of the country zambia yeah so to honor harry we had to name the airport after even Harry. the entire region i yeah. want to see this entire place can you imagine such a mighty big place yeah. a border town to zimbabwe and botswana exactly. is named after livingston yeah. a tourist who was brought by africans to see the falls that mother nature mother africa has given That's to given. us sure. and then we named our own thing after livingston this town is supposed to be called a traditional name. A traditional, yeah, a local Please. native name. Sure. <laughs> Someday it's going to happen. Sure, one day. How can our people bring a white man to come and see the falls that Mother Nature had already blessed us with before the white man showed up on the continent of Africa? And after showing him as a tourist, his plaque is now the one that is everywhere. What happened to the village chiefs and the Chuma and the brothers who were the ones that brought him? If we're looking for someone's plaque to put up there, 
Why not put the black of our black chiefs and brothers who brought Livingston to see the falls? He never founded the falls. The falls were there before he showed up. Why is his plaque everywhere? Why is his image, his sculpture all over the place? And to worsen the whole thing, the whole town was named after the same Livingston. This is the level of colonial encroachment that we have suffered on the continent of Africa. And then I went further and further and further. And so he now told me something that gladdened my heart and calmed me down. He said to me that the governments of Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Zambia have started meeting, I think they're parliaments, and they're trying to abolish passports. And that one took me to a whole new level. I was so excited that our people are beginning to wake up. And I said, may God bless the government in Zambia, in Botswana, and in Zimbabwe that has decided to do this. This is what we should do. If we don't do it, nobody will do it for us. Malawi has the same currency that you have here. In Zambia, it's well Kwacha. Yeah, it's it's Kwacha. Kwacha in Malawi. It's Kwacha, Kwacha in Zambia. Zambia. And we have Chichewa, Chichewa, that yes. they speak in Malawi, it's they speak it here Zambia. too. As well so as that's Zosie. where I met the lady and I was telling her, I say, I say, Buribanji uh, or something, yeah? yeah and, and she responded. responded. Yeah. Which it's is the same people. Same, same people. Same as Zambia, Botswana, we have got losses in Zambia, losses yeah. in Botswana. So why do we have to use passports to move from Botswana to cross over to see your brother? In the other country. Who put the borders there? Yeah. Who? Put the borders there. I keep asking. People from West Africa need to be able to come here without even the visas. Yes, sure, Pick up sure. your passport. Go. We, sh we should have a rail line that connects South and East and West. We are br the same people. You just told yeah. me about Chuma yeah. in, in Botswana. Botswana. People answer Chuma. Chuma is in, 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 in Igbo land in, in Nigeria. Yeah. We have he, 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 uh, Hakoinde, which is your president. Yep. It's almost sounding like Hakoinde in a Yoruba. So, we are the same people. Sure, true. We are the same people. Look at the language, look at the food. Everything is the, the same. same. Africans just need to wake up and rise above oh. the wicked colonialism because it's still here till today. Still today, yeah, sure, true, true. Love you, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And so after all my revolutionary outbursts, <laughs> we continued on our journey and he took us to a place more like a display center where he showed us what the water looks like when it is full. He showed us where the map, I mean, he was just taking us through all kinds of images of what happens at different seasons and different times in the year at the Victoria Falls. <laughs> saw some people that were taking a shower from the falls you know they call it water rafting and i signed up for it but unfortunately uh my time didn't allow me to do that i wanted to do that so just like almost the same depth where we found the fishermen we now found tourists who were at that same spot that same kind of spot and the water that was calling the falls were falling on them and they were showering with it i wanted to do that but i couldn't because i didn't have time and i'm saying to myself if I ever show up in Zambia again in Livingston, I'm going to go to that wall. So you have to take a boat and go over there and then come down from the boat, climb into the, onto the rocks and go through these rocks and get to where the water will fall on you. We saw all of that. And that was the joy of having that tour that took us to get all the views of Victoria Falls. On um, getting away from seeing all these views of Victoria Falls, which were so mesmerizing. We now headed back to um the mukuni art village where my fan was waiting to receive me and give me a gift on our way we stumbled on these baboons and they were just playing love and drinking water my goodness it was amazing you know just like human beings we showed up at the art village and the guy was so happy to receive me he came he hugged me and he said welcome 
Now I'm going to give you the gift that I have. As soon as they saw me, of course, the news that I was around, Nollywood star was around, had gone around everybody. When I came, many of them started pouring out. Even people that didn't see me the first time I came, started pouring out. Everybody wanted to take pictures. They didn't even want to waste time. They just wanted to take the picture, have the video, all kinds of stuff. And then we did those few picture taking stuff. And then I went in and I received the gift. It was the big five animals. It was the big five animals. And I kept saying to myself, how prophetic. How did he know that I have already now seen all the big five animals? And it was almost like, well done. You have now achieved this goal in your life. So this is the plaque, like an award. What's your name again? Richard. Richard. Richard is yeah. giving this to me yeah, as a it. fan. You know, most of the time when people meet me, all these fans, especially in Nigeria, they always want you to give them something. <laughs> <But> you see? <laughs> you guys, you see how it is. <laughs> This is in Zambia. A fan is giving this to me. Yeah. That's amazing. I love you, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna remember you a lot. Thank you. This is this is beautiful. Again, as if I was not done with what I was doing, my revolutionary outburst now broke out again. The place to white man to show up there to see, the, to see, the to see it the force was yeah. livingston yes the there were white there some black people there yes yes, yes. they were there they yes. Yes. whose image should be there is it the, the first white man that saw it or the people who no, own it? The natives. No. As we, uh, who As natives. Do you agree with me? Yes. yes. Does it make sense? No. no. In fact, uh, so as I'm leaving here, I'm telling you people now, everybody needs to start writing. The, the if, I, if I have the opportunity to see the traditional ruler, I'll talk to him. Everybody needs to start telling him we need to begin to change all these things. A visitor should not be the symbol of our land. He is a visitor. His image should be inside of a museum. Oh, this man, he came so, so time. This one, now that he's gonna be the symbol and then he, the whole town is named after him. It shouldn't be, guys. Slavery ended already. We are free people. Who is the chief that was there when Livingston was brought here? I want the image of the chief to be here. He has a name. They even gave me the name of the people who brought him. Where are they? But you go to the devil's pool, you see his image. The plaque is there. You come here, you see his giant image. I'm not in a white man country. I'm in my black country, man. Guys, we need to wake up and start changing all these things. Please, the moment we change it, our children will feel more comfortable staying back home. It's because we're not changing. That's why they're running away. And they go there, they become slaves. I have driven myself to more than 35 states in America, driving all by myself, without anybody in the car. And I keep interviewing Africans in America, say, if you have an opportunity to go back to Africa, would you go? All of them tell me they want to go. But they don't have the money to go. You think there's money over there? There's nothing there. This is life. Some of you are doing better than so many of them. You don't see them in snow and beautiful picture. And they don't have anything. I'm telling you because I know. So please be proud of who you are. Be happy that you are from here. Let unity bring us together. It doesn't matter whatever you believe in. Let us know that we have one mother, one mother Africa, one blood, one people. Defend, whether you come from the north or from the south or west, we must defend our heritage. Black is black. There's no two ways about it. One of the, be the best news I've heard today is when my guy told me that today Botswana and all these other surrounding countries are already having a meeting on how to abolish this whole nonsense of passport. You have to have a passport to come and visit. It is this not Zimbabwe there? Zimbabwe. You can walk over to Zimbabwe, right? Yes. The same name you have here is what they have in Zimbabwe. Yes. You go to Botswana, the people at the border have the same name. Yes. Malawi and Mozambique, the same name, the same border. Ghana and Togo, you see people in the same border, the same name. How can we then have to have passport to come and visit? So you want to go and visit your grandmother and say, Mama, how you doing? You go and look for a passport first of all. Does it make sense, guys? This is a psychological enslavement. That's what they call it. They have created the borders by themselves in Germany and then they came and enforced it with media in your brain so that when you see your brother, you think he's your enemy. 
We are one people, guys. All of you here, you are enough to start a revolution. Go to the king, they talk to the people in the parliament. We want these names to change so we can identify with this. That's why they gave you Jesus Christ and they put the image of a white man. Christ was a black man. You gotta be kidding me, guys. So be proud of who you are. My best friends are white people. I have partners who are white. I don't hate anybody. But I'm telling you, you have to be proud of who you are. You have, do you, have you seen white people who come to do sun tanning? They stay on the sun. They want to see if they can get what we have, what you don't even appreciate. You are so, so cool as a black man. You have to be proud of who you are. Without us, these people there would not survive. <laughs> Am I lying, guys? I'm not making this up. They will survive. The DRC Congo has every single mineral in the world in their soil. There's copper belt here, there's diamond, there's gold. Are you kidding me? In one continent. And the oil in Nigeria, the six larger oil exporter, we have everything. Why wouldn't you be proud? If your father owns all of this, your mother owns all of this, why wouldn't you be proud? Why would you buy into the rubbish they show you on TV with children that the flies on their faces and all of that? Oh, that, that's Africa. That's not, this is Africa right here. This is it. This is it right here. The beauty that you see, this is Africa. Not the nonsense they show you on the TV. I'm proud to be African, man. Thank you, guys. God bless you. God bless you. I'm not. Thank you. Alright. Okay, let's let's take it. They were so excited. I wanted to talk to the chief to say if you know who those people were back in the days that actually brought Livingston to see or to cite the falls. We need their images wherever they are so we can put their images up for Africans to look at images that look like them. We are not under colonization. And the guys understood and they all concurred and agreed with me. You know, I was very excited that I did that. And once we finished, we got in the car and our guide was like, okay, now you need to go to the hotel and get something to eat and change. I said, no, I promised myself that like I did in Malawi and cross over to Mozambique without a visa, I am going to go to Zimbabwe without a visa. My visa is only good for Zambia, but I want to go there. He said, but um, the immigration, are you sure they will not delay? I said, no, just take me there. All you need to do, just bring me. Let me, just let me come out and enter the immigration office and talk to somebody there. We're going to cross. And he took me and I went. The first guy I met, when he, I told him who I was, he smiled, he looked at me and I knew why he was smiling. He said, okay, you guys can go straight up. No waste of time. They talked to the other guy from the other side. They let, if you see the border, you won't even know it's a border. It's just a walk. You just walk and cross over. That's why the guys are using bicycles. Because I wanted to see it. I wanted my viewers to see how close, how much we are closely related to one another. This is me in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. <laughs> Zimbabwe from Zambia right there across just a few minutes drive we just came over here to Zimbabwe I am right on the soils of Zimbabwe this is Zimbabwean immigration right behind me border uh, land immigration and so look at the rail there's a train coming right there it's moving from Zimbabwe down to uh, Zambia just down there yeah, I think, okay, so this is where they stop. It's a trend, it's a coach head. Wow. Amazing. You can see how excited I was. I was just making the videos like, oh my goodness, this is the Zimbabwean soil. I didn't even get a visa to come here, but I'm here right now because I'm an African child. I am a borderless African citizen. And this is what I pray for and it is going to happen in my lifetime that Africans from the West will be able to identify with their brothers and sisters in the East and the ones in the South will be able to identify with their brothers and sisters in the West and we will remove and abolish all these limitations to travel. We will stop all this going to seek for visas from West Africa to go to East and to go to South. 
We are the same people. So that was how my journey to Zimbabwe happened. So excited, you know, free as a bird. And as we're coming, the guy stopped for the coach head to pass. And I said, why are you stopping? The coach head is on the rail and you're stopping here. He said, no, that this bridge is one car at a time. I said, what? He said, no two cars can go on the bridge. So if one car is going, every other car will wait until this one goes. He said, that's how they preserve the bridge. And immediately I thought about our third mainland bridge in Lagos, Nigeria. There is nobody today that can tell you this is the number of cars that are supposed to be on the bridge per time. This, there's no regulation, nothing. The bridge gets overwhelmed at every given time and nobody cares. They look at Zambia. They were told don't have more than two cars or one car on this bridge at any given time and they maintained it. West Africa, Nigeria has a lot to learn from so many other African countries, man. So that was it. So we finished from Zimbabwe, came back into Zambia, and that marked the end of the chapter two in my day two adventure. Now, we have a chapter three of day two. And in this chapter three of day two, <laughs> I can only say you'll be amazed. No, seriously, you'll be amazed. We went on a cruise. The same cruise that I did when I was in Dubai, I did in Zambia. Now I'm going to tell you what I found out as we were going on that cruise in Livingston. Chapter 3.